Size and weight aren't the only things separating today's two title tablets. The crucial difference between the stars of today's show is that only one of them was officially produced. We'll talk about that, and we'll cover most of the big news of the week from Motorola, Apple, Nokia, and all the rest on episode 046 of the Pocket Now Weekly, the once-a-week podcast from PocketNow.com, where we discuss smartphones, tablets, and the state of mobile technology in 2013. I'm your host, Michael Fisher, editorial director at Pocket Now, and today I'm joined by senior editor Taylor Martin from North Carolina. Good morning to you. Hello, everyone. And I'm actually surprised you remember where I live. I remember the state. I do. Well, I had to say that because back after a long hiatus, uh, all the way from the Windy City or the environs surrounding it, it's our resident WebOS representative, contributing editor Adam Dowd. Welcome back to the show, sir. What is vertically rising, dogs? (laughs) <laughs> man my brain was working so quick i thought you were going to make a different joke there <laughs> good to see you sir good to hear your voice rather on our audio only podcast adam is here specifically to talk to us a little bit about a uh, a device he got his hands on and wrote an editorial about uh, this week which i have referenced in the rundown listeners if you want to uh, click on that link you can do so but first we have a couple announcements to get out of the way uh number one we've started a new sort of section of the pocket now insider uh it is not just a video series it's about getting to know us from all uh, aspects all media avenues using all types of communication to do that anyway you can read an editorial and get to know pocket now's anton d Nodge. He has written an excellent piece about his life uh, and about what has uh, conspired to make him the man he is today. So you should read that. It is linked. And yes, you will be getting some from other people on the site. Taylor, are you working on yours? Is that what you're doing? I am I am not on that. I'm working on a Pocket Now Insider today for what's on my device and stuff like that. Oh, okay. All right, cool. Well, I don't know who's going to do it next then. What? Because I've had, I don't know how many people, I mean... Probably hundreds of people asking how I set up my device like I did uh, over the weekend, last weekend. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, what, I mean, it's device? just been uh, Nexus 4. Oh, yeah, with your sweet, like, text widgets down below, the Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus ones? Yeah. Those are awesome. I want to know how you did that. How did you do that? I mean, not, you know I mean? Like, what, what, what is that widget? What Spoiler it? alert, it's just um, UCCW, which is Ultimate Customized Clock Widget or something like that. And Play Bars, a theme for that app. And basically, I just downloaded the tune. I'm like, hey, this looks cool. and Sweet. But you're going to do a feature on oh. it? Yeah. All right, good. Uh, also, there is a uh, another episode of the Pocket Now VIP has landed. Episode 2 features uh, Phil Nickinson, who I believe is editor-in-chief of Android Central. I don't know. His, I know he runs Android Central. I just don't know He's- his official title. Yeah, he's a yes. Yeah, yeah, okay. So uh, I have not watched that episode yet. Have, have either of you guys? I have. Um, I watched about three minutes of it, and then I'm like, crap, I've got stuff to do. <laughs> but, but but Adam has watched it. Yeah, I watched it, although granted I was at work, but don't tell work. Um, <laughs> well, because after all, it was better than work. Um, so, oh, really? yeah, it was, uh, it was a pretty good – they, they talked about uh, Android a whole lot less than I thought they would. Really? <laughs> so, yeah, a lot of, uh, lot of musical discussion, a lot of uh, – uh, you know, kids uh, just <laughs> just uh, just like okay, that works. <laughs> All right. So. Well, good to know the wandering bus of the Pocket Now VIP. <laughs> <laughs> Very much so. Out. No, I love that. I love how conversation can just just be liquid on some of these things because you know you bring people from other sites on and it's like, hey, let's talk about anything because this is just fun to do. I mean, we, right. we talk about we spend all week talking about mobile technology. There's no reason we shouldn't talk about you know ice cream or whatever exactly. or coffee. Or a coffee, yes. And I have a delicious new coffee. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I squeezed it in there. I I'm getting good at did. this. I saw that you did. We were talking about that on <laughs> <laughs> on the other side of the podcast, as my friends at Trek FM would call it, the other side of the room. Let's get to talking. Now the announcements are out of the way. Uh, let's get to talking a little bit about WebOS. Adam Dowd has in his hands right now an HP Touchpad Go. Now we've talked about this device before. Uh, the fascinating thing to WebOS aficionados is that it's one of those products that was never actually released. It was uh, due to land just a couple weeks after the HP 
Google-led um, shutdown of WebOS. But the fascinating thing from a broader perspective, if you haven't already clicked on to the next time code, listeners, is that it was also one of the first 7-inch tablets. It was also one of the first smaller tablets, and it has some interesting characteristics in that regard. Um, Adam, can you just give us the rundown on, on your experience with the Touchpad Go in the 10 days you've had it or so? Yeah, so far, it's um, first of all, you need to hedge expectations because, after all, this was a 2011 tablet. Right. It's nothing really more than a touchpad. I mean, it's just a smaller touchpad. So if you're expecting it to walk on water or cure cancer, you need to hedge those those, those expectations. <laughs> but one of the cool things about the Touchpad Go is it's very much lives up to its name. It is a Touchpad Go. It's tiny. I mean, it's like a uh, you know today's Nexus Seven or iPad Mini or you know any number of other seven inch tablets that are out there. But this was back in 2011. This did not exist back in 2011. Nobody wanted a 7-inch tablet in 2011. Amazon hadn't even come out with the Kindle Fire yet. I mean, this was this was pretty this is a pretty bold move by HP. I mean, this was a almost Apple-like move and by HP. And the didn't stop at the uh, at the size of the device. It it, it extended to the form factor too because not only was it a 7-inch tablet, but it's a landscape 7-inch tablet. Mm-hmm, with right. the uh, four by three aspect ratio instead of the sixteen by nine, yeah. um, and the uh, rear facing camera, which you know makes tech bloggers want to vomit these days. But there is a good argument for it. I'm going to throw a, I'm going to throw a little shout out out to uh, the tech chat Mark Mark Kopic, who uh, wrote a little thing uh, based on my editorial about the uh, rear facing camera. How it is good for document scanning. It is good for QR codes. Not the camera on this. Don't get me wrong. But in general, a rear facing camera on a yeah, tablet. What? And have its use. What's the res on that rear-facing camera? It's pretty much the same that came in the Pre-3. It's a 5-megapixel, um, okay. supposedly autofocus. It takes okay <laughs> pictures. Yeah, I remember taking so. some shots with the Pre-3 back in the day. It was it, it, Okay is um, is maybe a little generous, yeah. It, 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 it's pretty darn generous, actually. Yeah. Uh, but one of the other nice things is it had the soft touch back, um, which somehow eluded the uh, its bigger brother, the touchpad. Uh, right. So no fingerprint magnet. Yeah. Super slick back. Yeah, that, um, that original touchpad. I was just using it last night as a demo for this uh, play I'm doing. And yeah, it's it. oh my God, you pick that thing up and you can feel, you don't even have to look at the back. You can feel your fingerprints <laughs> forming on the back. In, of the thing. <laughs> indeed you can. And uh, two other things that are noticeably absent, and I don't know if this is because this is a production model, uh, it's not a finished model or what have you, but uh, wireless charging does not work, um, oh. nor does uh, touch to share. Oh, get so, out of here! Those are I, the two like. Well, uh, as you say, it's a pre-production unit. I'm sure they would have been, they would have made it. I spent ten minutes smacking this thing with my pre three, saying "Sure, sure, sure, <laughs> come on!" And I just I thought, well, maybe it's on the bottom because that's where the button is. No, it's not there. Maybe it's on the side because that's where it is on the touchpad. No, it's not there. Oh man! So uh, I, I could not get touch to share to work. So and for all we know, that could be a software thing because the Veer actually has touch to share capability that was never released. Right. So um, you know, and there's a there's a couple of other you know hangups. You know, it took me probably about half an hour to get the thing to recognize my Palm profile because it was a pre-production unit. HP servers weren't recognizing my profile, so I had to install pre-ware and then Impasta and then a patch and then I had to go into <laughs> Impasta. I had to, you know, I had to yeah. tweak it a little bit now, just these to get are, it to recognize. Listener, these are, these are all uh, these are all kind of uh, WebOS homebrew, uh, you know, tools mm-hmm. and terms here for exactly. getting around Palm's yeah. established yeah. system. Yeah. Pre-ware can be paralleled with Cydia. Yeah, 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 exactly. To an extent, I guess. Pre-ware pre- right. was, was great back in the day. Um, oh, yeah, I loved it. I loved <clears> it, too. I, 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 no, Taylor, what WebOS device did you have back in the day, or were you just reviewing them? I had the original Pre, the Pre Plus, the Pre 2, the touchpad, and... Um, well, that's a, that's a pretty wide array else. right there. You didn't yeah, have the I, I loved WebOS. Uh, no, I did not have the Veer. <laughs> With your giant, <laughs> giant paws. <laughs> I sold the Veer to a, a big, burly man who came into Best Buy one day. When you were at Best Buy? Really? Yeah, he, he came in. He's like, I want a really small smartphone. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're in luck, sir. <laughs> I got a Veer for you. Yeah, I, I bought the Veer on launch day. I think it was March no, it wasn't 15th the or May 15th or something. It wasn't the Veer. I had quit Best Buy by then. It was, um, it was the Pixie. Oh, the Pixie. Oh. It was My the brother Pix- had the Pixie. My brother carried the Pixie for like two years. He loved On it. purpose? Yeah, that's why. Right, but he wouldn't call it the Pixie. Because remember when it was codenamed the EOS? 
Like right. the EOS has been the most like abused code name in the history of mobile phones. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like he thought EOS was a much cooler uh, name, and he had resolved to buy it when I told him about the leaks. And then the, it came out as the Pixie. He's like, "Yeah, I'm still gonna buy it, but I'm gonna call it the EOS." <laughs> yeah, that's why it was okay. so funny because it was this big dude, like this big burly redneck man who came in for a phone, and he walked out <laughs> carrying a Pixie. Like it's just like, y'all, y'all see yeah. my new Pixie. Check it out. <laughs> uh, well, it, it's it's awesome to hear firsthand from from somebody who's who's got the go in hand, and I understand it's it's kind of not exactly yours. You have to rotate it out to to other folks, right, Adam? It's a temporary yeah. ownership situation. So yeah. So how did this come to be? That's what I'm interested in. So this phone, or this tablet, was never released. How did you guys get your hands on it? Well, um, that's. A, a bit of a uh, interesting question. Um, if you, I don't know. If you, to anyone? <laughs> I, I don't know if you remember my uh, my uh, podcast, my first podcast appearance, where we talked about the winds are not. I'm going to use the same story that I used for the winds are not. Um, it's rather like when someone found that iPhone four in a bar. Only we knew exactly where and what bar it would show up in. <laughs> so. Oh. Um, so it's kind of uh, it's kind of one of those things, um, and it was really cool because when we opened the box, it was hand numbered. I, 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 as far as I know, I own Touchpad Go number thirty. Really? No, no. So. Are, are they? It, it, did you? When you say open the box, you're not talking about retail packaging, right? It was. I wouldn't call it retail packaging. Um, it was a box. It was a box that was meant for the touchpad go. And it had, you know, the, it looked kind of like a phone box. It was all plain. Obviously there was no carrier. Oh, there was no uh, branding stuff on yeah. There. yeah. But, uh, the interesting part guys, you, you lo- you'll love this. The interesting part, there's a barcode on it with, uh, you know, all the product information and stuff like that. And the name of the product is the palm, uh, none no, of the HP palm pad. Really? Oh, yes. yeah. That was one of the names that was being tossed around before the touchpad was announced. Yeah. Was, so I looked yeah. at that. I'm like, what? <laughs> so, uh, you know, that would have been uh, great. That would have been yeah, a nice why homage. Why did they do that? I, exactly. Because touchpad is just, you search you, you you do a Google search for touchpad and like half your results are like replace your laptop's touchpad like trackpad trackpad replacements. It's like, ugh. so H- palm yeah, pad would have been better. Palm pad. So. Oh man. Well, that's what we, that's what we should call should have called this podcast. The HP the, Palm Pad versus the HP Palm Pad Weekly Tablet Z. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, Adam, thanks. I, I wish we we had a longer show so we could discuss it a little bit uh, a little bit more because we love hearing about this. But I'm, you know, are, are, is this the last we're going to hear from you on the Touchpad Go, or do we have another? Is there another piece in the pipeline? Uh, I'm uh, I, I am currently in negotiations with Tony, so we'll see where it goes. Uh, okay. There should be more to come. I so. would love it if there were more to come. That would be so cool. It would be nice to do a, a genuine versus. Uh, like a comparison video, just for fun, not for any real conclusions. But I thought it would be fun to do a HP uh, a, a touchpad Go versus HP Slate Seven, just to see, you know, it's kind of oh, the pen and now type. Retro- you are retros- correct. Don't do so. it. Don't give it to me though, because I'll just destroy that Slate Seven. <laughs> I remember seeing that thing and thinking about the touchpad Go and just ah, let's not talk about it again. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> moving um, on. Moving on. Yeah. Well, let's talk Check about the base. other the other tablet in our uh, in our title, and that is the one that I've got here in the Boston offices. Uh, which Boston, the, the, the Boston offices, dude. Uh, which <laughs> which commenters correctly and hilariously refer to as Michael's house, which is true. Uh, <laughs> the, the Sony Xperia Tablet Z I have had here for uh, I think going on five days now, and I've been using it extensively. I've carried it to Eastern Long Island. I've taken it in my travels with me, and I've put <laughs> I've put the Tablet Z under so many running faucets, dudes. It's not even like I just love scaring my my uh, my my parents. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, you see how smudgy it gets. So you just put it under the sink, and my mother will you know gasp and fall over and. <laughs> it was it's it's been so much so much fun. Um and what one of the things that struck me about the comparison between the Touchpad Go and the Tablet Z is that they they kind of couldn't be more different. Um but in some ways they're very similar. Like the Touchpad Go back in its day was one of the only 7-inch tablets I would have considered. Mm-hmm. And today the Tablet Z is really the first 10-inch tablet I've actually enjoyed using in a very long time. Uh, not that I've used you, that many. Go ahead. Uh, you haven't had the Nexus 10. I have. I unboxed it, actually. Oh, okay. Yeah, I unboxed I it. I loved that. And then I, I sent it to tablet. Joe for the review. Um, <laughs> oh, I, now, I've got it now. 
<laughs> See, now I, w- I would like to, to use it, but here's my thing about the Nexus 10, uh, and this does relate to the Tablet Z. The Nexus 10 runs, obviously, stock Android, as Nexus devices do. So what you have is this stupid situation where the app's like home button, and I'm talking about running stock, I'm not talking about running any ROMs, the app's shortcut is dead center in the bottom of the display. If you want to get to your notifications, you have to treat it like a phone and reach up to the upper left... If you want special settings toggles, you have to reach up to the upper right. The thing, I, I don't like that version of Android running on a uh, on a tablet that size. Yeah, they should have kept it the way it was. They exactly. did it to keep it uh, kind of streamlined the experience across multiple devices and multiple sizes. Right. But they should have kept it the way it was because it was kind of like a desktop mode. Exactly. Now, now on the Nexus 7, I didn't even like it on the Nexus 7, but it still made a degree of sense because the Nexus 7 is small enough to where you can almost treat it as a big phone. But on something that is not only 10 inches, but also a landscape device, it makes no sense to me. So on the Xperia Z, with this cool Sony skin on it, which, you know, I'm sure tons of people will hate for its lag and its bloat and all this kind of stuff, there's actually really and cool elements to it. And because right, sure. It's, hey, no. <laughs> but no, no, but there are really, really cool elements like keeping the notifications and settings toggles in the lower right where it's just a thumb swipe away. Like, you know, putting the home button and the back key and the multitasking button off to the left on the bottom. You know, these things are all, these these make sense. And they're a little like touches the, uh, throughout it. Go ahead. I, I'm sorry. It sounds to me like the uh, the uh, the CM9 uh, ice, ice cream sandwich that I had on the touchpad for a while it seems very similar to that. Oh, so. you know, it is. Uh, and I ran the early alpha of that in my first video for Pocket Now, I think, like a year ago. And so, yeah, it is similar to that, except it looks way cooler because... Obviously, Android's visual style has improved since then, Evolved. and so has Sony's, yeah. And so, right. so, Sony's skin has some really nice touches in it, actually, that makes it visually very pretty. But the other huge thing that I love using about the Tablet Z is the weight. Um, I read in bed a lot, and when you use the iPad 3 to read in bed, you're taking your life into your hands, because if you just start falling asleep and drop that thing on your face, you're dead. <laughs> like, it, it's it's kind of like dropping a truck on your face. <laughs> but... The Tablet Z is is so light that I can actually hold it with one hand in landscape and and flip pages the other way. Like, wow. Oh, my. It's amazingly cool. Um, so it, there's an obsession that we have with thin things and light things as consumers and as, as gadget freaks. But um, sometimes unless it's you're justified. Talking, unless you're talking Samsung light, like... Right. Oh, and that, paperweight. And that's another thing, right? There's no Either creaking way. in this thing. There's no. It's not finished a in a hyperglaze. Thing. Yeah, it, you you can try and twist it, and that metal frame underneath keeps it rigid. So I think it's pretty clear that I'm I'm kind of in love with the hardware so far. And also, sounds like it. Yeah, maybe a first. Maybe a Why first. Don't you marry it? Yet? Why don't you? Be... <laughs> um, Sorry, I had to. You're gonna sing to. the "Kissing in a Tree" song. Uh, <laughs> you know, one of the interesting <laughs> things that I I see on the <laughs> Tablet Z, which is. I was going to say I hadn't seen on a tablet before, but that's not true because we just got done talking about the touchpad family, is a notification light. And I had forgotten about mm-hmm. it on the touchpad, which you know incorporated it as a flashing light in the middle of the home button. Um, mm-hmm. The Tablet Z has it placed in a less convenient place, but at least it's there. It's off to the side by the power standby button. So there's mm-hmm. a little LED that flashes when you have notifications, which is a very nice touch. Nice. Yeah. So... You know, we're still at first impressions here, and the review won't be out for for a little while. But uh, it's I'm I'm really enjoying the test drive so far. I'm thinking about Ghostbusters too, and I just want to say you're not sleeping with it, are you, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> I quite literally, I am. I am indeed. <laughs> I, uh, you it? sexy thing. <laughs> um, shall we transition? Unless you guys have a, another question on the Z, I'd like to talk well, about something else. <clears throat> I'm going to talk about just small tablets and in, in general, really quickly. Yeah. Um, it's funny because Adam was talking about how the seven inch tablet was kind of taboo back when the touchpad go would have came out and how it was kind of an Apple move and everything. And I had used several um, seven inch tablets. I used seven inch tablets before the iPad came out. Um, would you use the galaxy tab? Well, I used the galaxy tab, but that was after the iPad. Yeah, I used it was the galaxy after the iPad tab. one. Yeah. yeah. I used a galaxy. Uh, it was a galaxy tab seven. And I had also used some Arcos tablets. Way back in the day, oh. they were running Android. Wow! Whoa! <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, I was I was an early adopter, and that was terrible. Yeah, but um, <laughs> but 
But back in the day, I used to completely bash 7-inch tablets. They're not big enough. They don't really serve a real purpose. They're just slightly bigger than a phone. And just on and on, they were awkward to use, which I still kind of agree with to an extent because I can't type on one. I used to carry an iPad every day, and I wrote thousands of editorials on the on-screen keyboard on my full-size iPad. You're a crazy person. Seriously? I would do it. I, yes, I could, I could write a full 1,200-word uh, article in... 45 minutes on an iPad. That's pretty cool, man. I would yeah, never the, do more than like three sentences. <laughs> yeah. so. well, well, after I used it for a while, I got, I got very used to the, the, the soft keyboard. But the main, um, I guess, benefit was the fact that I wasn't distracted from everything. Mm. Because the multitasking is so bad that I didn't <laughs> want to do other things. You I'm just, like, oh, good, like, good oh I got that notification. I'm like, ooh, notification. Not touching it. Just keep typing. <laughs> yes. You know, so... <clears throat> Contextually, it was really awesome, but then I got the iPad Mini, and it's the first small tablet that I've just absolutely fallen in love with. Now, mm. you know, um, and the display is just so awful. <laughs> it is bad. You make an so interesting bad. point, though, Taylor. I mean, I was just thinking about so whenever multitasking gets brought up uh, in, on this podcast, so obviously we talk about WebOS, and this is a good show to 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 just mention it on. I still think WebOS is the best multitasking solution for me. I think it's the kind of the one thing nobody has managed to poach accurately yet from WebOS. Hands and, down. Yeah. Uh, but, but however, and I wonder if you agree or disagree with me, Adam, uh, that phenomenon that Taylor mentions, that, that you don't want to multitask on a tablet because it's still inherently less efficient than doing it in a desktop scenario, is still, d- does still apply to WebOS. Like I would, even though swiping up and going to another card is fun, it's still much more time-consuming than this layered window thing I have going on on my desktop with tabs in the browser and all this stuff. So th- I, I would oh. still not want to multitask on a tablet, uh, even if, I, if WebOS was still alive and kicking. I could. I, One it, of the uh, things that Apple, or not Apple, but everyone overlooks on, say, an iPad is how easy it is to switch between apps. Um, well, because if, if you with use... The four, with a four-finger swipe? Yeah, four or five. Well, five five to go back to the home screen, four to four to uh, to bring up the app, the yeah, running app yeah. tray. Yeah, so you take four well, fingers and then you swipe your head up. on a Tuesday, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, and you know what's so funny? We used to make fun of those gestures, but I, I got to tell you, it, they they are very nice. You, I use them all the time. Yeah, absolutely. yeah. Like I use four much- finger swipe to the to the left, and it pulls. Um, your most recent app from the right. Yeah. <laughs> Did you it's think it was going to break into songs? To the, <laughs> to the it's left. Way too early in the morning. <laughs> to, the, to the left. To the I, left. I, I thought about. I used the four finger swipe all the time, and that took me on one road. And then to the left took me down another road. Oh man, I need some more coffee. Uh, this is why we record the weekly in the morning. Stay fresh. That's right. To keep our minds. We need some donut be. shop coffee. Right in the That's gutter. That's two, Michael. Count them. I see it. I see you dropping it. Yeah. <laughs> our surreptitious sponsor is alive and well. <laughs> Adam, tell me whether you agree or disagree with this multitasking point of view before we move on to uh, the, the tiny phone. I gotta disagree, actually. I, I don't mind... I, I, I actually prefer to multitask on my touchpad. Uh, you know, the whole you know, open up an email, copy text from a web page into it, and, uh, you know, um, I, it, it even got to the point where I wanted to have videos running in the background while I was, you know, surfing or something like that, just so I could listen to them. So totally. there's, a, there's a patch for, like, YouTube where you could, uh, you know, you could actually pull up, like, a movie and you could let YouTube play in the background why so yeah i mean as yeah. as it's not in it's not intuitive and it's not really built for a tablet um but i i i have to say that i very much enjoy multitasking on a touchpad if i have more than one thing to do obviously so right. I, um, I also have to disagree though that not not with you adam with michael that the touchpad no that the web os is um multitasking is the best for a tablet what? um what's better yeah, floating apps Hands down. Oh, what? Like on the on the Note ten dot one or yeah, or 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 so, split okay. screen apps. All right, so that but, is, that is or split screen on on Windows but, eight. Yeah, but not how right. they're currently implemented. What we were talking about before, after chat heads came out, a quickly yeah. expandable and and minimizing um, floating app. So you just tap it and it opens up. Tap it again and it disappears. Yeah, uh, th- yeah. There, there's that, definitely so <clears throat> right so. <laughs> but it doesn't currently exist. And we have two different pushes happening, right? In the desktop space, we have Apple kind of leading the charge to to um, tabletify the desktop almost, to iOSify OS X. 
uh, if Ooh. I can use a clumsy sentence. And they're doing Ooh. it, and they're doing it continuously. Uh, but on the other side, we have uh, Samsung and and uh, Microsoft making this push to to port desktop elements to the mobile environment. Now, I prefer that latter approach. I, I really do. Absolutely. It, most of the stuff that Apple is bringing to the desktop experience that looks iPad-ish, I don't use. Like right now, I'm looking at my stupid notification center, which I never use. I'm looking at that dumb, uh, dumb thing to the left. Yeah, it's all just dumb cruft. It, it, like it doesn't look good. Uh, whereas I, I've always thought that bringing desktop elements to mobile is the way to go. Unfortunately, I think that neither Samsung nor Microsoft has really done it terribly well yet, um, at least for my use cases. But I'm glad we're, we're, we're kind of going down that road. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. But um, speaking of things that can run, that, that are going to run those modifications, the Samsung Galaxy S4 Mini, who thinks that that thing is going to have multi-screen? Do we know anything about this yet? I basically have a filter for anything Galaxy S4 and then another one of Samsung's buzzwords. <laughs> <laughs> so Galaxy S4 Active, Galaxy S4 uh, uh, Zoom. Well, that's not what it's going to be. Galaxy Zoom. All, not, not all, all I'm hearing you say is Galaxy S4. Oh, and pause. Wow. oh good filter, man. You're just archiving? <laughs> that's nice. Yeah. Yeah. Samsung, Samsung fans are going to love you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would ho- I would hope that it would have that uh, that that type of multitasking capability. You know, the, right. even yeah. the S. Why though? What it's, it, if it why? doesn't? Because it's, if it doesn't, it should not be called the Galaxy S4 anything. It should be its own device. Well, we're already doing that. that that's what this is. What happened with the Galaxy S3 Mini? Everyone got excited, <laughs> and then they found out no. It's, it's just nothing a, like the Galaxy S4. Right. On the inside, it, is, it does not resemble it at all. It's only on the outside that it looks like a Galaxy S3. So that's it's like saying the, the Pre-3 and the Veer were the same phone, just smaller. Like, it, it is basically saying that, yeah. yeah. And that is not the case. Uh, but the downgrade in specs looks to include a 1.7 gigahertz dual-core processor, uh, 1.5 gigs of RAM, 8 gigs of storage. Ouch. Expandable with your micro SD, of course. So listen... Uh, all the specs do take a, a step down here, but so is this wrong? This is my question. I don't. I see why they're they're doing this. I see why you would not want to put a whole bunch of flagship class specs in a smaller package that people are not going to appreciate. If people want the flagship specs, they're also going to want the bigger screen. They're going to buy the real Galaxy S4. So put it into a smaller package. Take the specs away that people aren't going to notice and sell this to hobbyists to people who want a smaller device with the buzz of the bigger one, right? I, is this... No. Am I the only one who doesn't think this is wrong? People no, that don't well, have 249, yes. uh, 250 bucks to drop on a new phone, I mean, that could right. be it, too. Yeah, exactly. So, that too. Here's, my right. thing. here's my thing. There are hardly any, any, any high-end smartphones smaller than 4.5 inches. Yeah, so you're, you're, making, you're making the argument I usually make, yeah. 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 Why not make a small, high-end device? There are a lot of people asking for one. There are a lot of people with small hands. Mm-hmm. I'm not one of those, but I'm fighting <laughs> for the people with small hands because I have big hands, and every phone is pretty comfortable to use now. Yeah. Um, I mean, why call it the Galaxy S4 or the Galaxy S4 Mini? I understand why they're doing that. They're basically just munching off the existing buzz and hype of the Galaxy S4. Exactly. Oh, this must be the Galaxy S4 and be a smaller version for those people. Who, no, it's not. It's not even the same phone. No, see, I hear Benny and I automatically assume downgrade. I mean, you know, it's yeah. like, uh, you know, like Austin Powers, Mini Me. He wasn't going to be beating up Austin <laughs> Powers by himself. He needed, uh, he needed Doctor Evil to to do his stuff. And same thing with the S4 Mini. I just, I, I hear Mini and I just assume that there's going to be a drop off in specs. Now, there. true so, enough. Now, there is also- an opportunity there for an OEM to come in and change the game. There is an opportunity yeah. there still lying wide open. It's a risk because I don't know if it would work. I truly don't. But for, I'm for somebody to come out and Motorola. say, like, yeah, look, look at this. We're doing a four-inch display, uh, so you can still use it with one hand. But look at these specs. They're exactly the same. And that, that's just ripe for a tagline there. You know, it's like Here, exactly the same, only smaller. You know, The, the reason that's never going to work is because everybody has put so much into display quality. You yeah. know, if you go from a 1080p device at almost five inches or at five inches and then you make a mini, you're going to have to go down to 720p. 
Mm-hmm. If you make it four inches, you're going to have to go to 720p because 1080 at right. four inches is ridiculous and useless. But what it's about 720? What about 720p at four inches? Like that's got to amount to a, a similar pixel density, right? Right. But people don't care about pixel density. All they care about is that resolution. Like people who would be looking at the mini, yeah, don't care about the resolution or the the density. They're like, oh, this one's 1080p and this one's 720p. They don't understand how it works. Yeah, that right. would have to be part of the crazy. Part of the crazy would have to be 4-inch 1080p display, <laughs> which exactly. would be completely and then we, useless. And then, and then we would we tear would it pull apart. Our hairs out. We would yeah. pull our hair out and be like, why are you doing this? Yeah, exactly. Why are you ruining my life? <laughs> why are you giving me so much to write about? Wait. Uh, wait, wait. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, so the, the, the Galaxy S4 Mini continues the, the argument that, that, has, that arose with the Galaxy S3 Mini, blah, 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 blah. So we're, know, we're sitting here bashing this, or at least I'm bashing the anyway. idea. Yeah. I'm bashing the idea, yet I own an iPad Mini, and it is the exact same thing from, from Apple. <laughs> it is a dumbed-down version of an iPad. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is, right. But, but the utility there is, is, is different, right? Because well, you know, so, somehow I think mini tablets versus tablets is a very different argument than mini, tablet, mini phones versus phones. Maybe, but, but my biggest complaint with the iPad mini is actually not the display. It's the processor because, you know, on a tablet, I wrote an article about this last night and I was talking to you about it, Michael. Um, phones are, you know, overkill for our needs. Yeah. They're, they're overkill. But th- that doesn't apply to a tablet because I do so much more with it. I, I play games and do other things on a tablet that I don't normally do with my phone. Yeah. And the iPad mini has a older chipset in it, and it's not nearly as powerful as the iPad third generation or fourth generation. I went from an iPad 3 to the iPad mini, and playing the same games, they stutter and actually do not play well at all. Ugh. See, that's that's irritating. Mm. Yeah, so that that is the exact same case that we would see here with the Galaxy uh, S4 Mini. While we're talking about apps on tablets, Adam, have you tried to run Sparkle on the touchpad Go? I have not yet. So actually, I don't even know if I... Is that a free app? Do I even oh, own that? I, th- I, think, I think you have to buy it. But if you buy it, I will, I will buy you a beer whenever we meet in person, which maybe never. Uh, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but because I, a little asterisk there, but okay. Sparkle HD was one, I'll, I'll one buy of him my a beer favorite games ever on WebOS. It was incredible. Uh, I don't think I ever played that. Well, it, it is on iOS too. If you guys want to check it out, it's it's you know it's not like a one of a kind game. Anyway, we're we're getting off track. Uh, Taylor, you mentioned the X phone a second ago. I want to I get did? to that. So, are you are you implying that the Motorola? Okay. Yeah, you did. That the Motorola Moto <laughs> X uh, or the X phone, as the rumors were referring to it, uh, is maybe one of the first examples of this oh. unicorn we're talking about. No, I just said Motorola. I didn't say Moto X. Don't don't mix up my words here. I'm I'm, I'm saying it. I'm, <laughs> I'm putting them words right in your mouth. Uh, That's because, not what I'm saying, but it does look kind of small from the well, pictures we've seen. It does, and it looks kind of unremarkable from a hardware perspective too. But uh, maybe that's the point. That is no longer the most interesting thing about the Motorola phone, uh, the X phone, which is actually being called the Moto X, by the way. And yes. um, that's the official it name. I think that's a cool America. name. Yeah, and that's the thing. Every Moto X is, according to, um, I believe this is CEO Dennis Woodside who said this, or maybe this just is the Motorola press release, but every Moto X sold in the USA will be oh, assembled made in Texas. Fort Worth, Texas. <laughs> Texas. Making Hot it the first damn, smartphone it. ever assembled domestically. Now, that's interesting. Um, I, I, I've not fact-checked this. I mean, there may well be another one that was assembled domestically that we don't know about. But... You know that's fascinating to me. Now I, I'm, they may, they've used very careful phrasing. Every Moto X sold in the USA will be assembled in Fort Worth, so they're probably going to build some for overseas markets and right. whatever. But would you guys now? The price increase is probably going to be uh, like a given, it's monumental. More, right, it's more expensive to build things in, in America. But thousand dollar phone that has decent specs. Would you guys buy, buy it though? Like how much more would, would you pay for an American made phone as if it were, as Americans? If it were eight hundred dollars, that would be my limit. Only because one, I support Motorola because they're a little different. They always have been, yeah. and two, they're an American company. And everyone always talks about, um, you know, if this was made in America, I'd buy it. My grandpa was just a huge, huge proponent of made in America. Mm-hmm. Um, he would. It didn't matter what it was. If you bought something, where was that made? China. You know, you're like, no, right. it was actually made in Mex- Mexico. China. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you know when it came to put or when push came to shove and you know 
there are things that were made in USA, he wouldn't buy them because they were expensive and he was a penny pincher. So okay. it was um, right. it, that's kind of the case with a lot of people. Hello. Same thing with the Nexus Q. Well, this thing um, uh, always it, it, w- this discussion always puts me in mind of of that argument, um, but also of a, the one of the most like I don't know morose commercials I've I've ever seen, and I always remember it. I remember seeing this commercial when I was like six. It was it was this like thirty second spot with this mother and daughter like doing laundry, and there was like a gray filter over that lens, and it was just all really it was, it was immediately very bleak. But they're having this conversation. It's like, why did Daddy lose his job? And it's like, well, Daddy's got to go find work and all this kind of stuff. And it ended up with the most like this this gravelly voiced sad guy. It was like, if you think looking for the Made in America label doesn't matter, it matters. And I'm like, <laughs> my God, that's I, fantastic. I'm like six years old, being like, oh my God, I don't know why, but I believe you. You know, I'm having two thoughts on this on this particular thread. Uh, the first thought is, I drive a Mitsubishi. Made in America is not exactly the most important thing in the world to me. Right. Um, and my second thought is, I'm flashing back to the movie Crazy People with Dudley Moore, uh, where they had a Sony commercial where the tagline was, Sony, because Caucasians are too damn tall. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard of that film, and now I need to see it. Apparently, yes, you do. You absolutely need to see it. It's fantastic. Oh, dear God. So, it's basically uh, the the gist is um, an advertising company turns over their um, the, all their uh, market uh, advertising ideas to an insane asylum. <laughs> oh, 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 movies. No, so like I, you know, this is a, a much bigger conversation, and it could go on for a long time. And and you know, there are. The, the other side is, of course, that we are no longer in this kind of old economy model where it's like, you know, we're confining production and purchase to single countries is a really good idea. It's it's kind of not. I don't know. I, I'm obviously uh, straying outside my I may area be alone in this. Go ahead. I may be alone in this, but I'm, I'm the kind of person who really doesn't care for, for nationality. Um, yeah. Like, like I, I would rather the world be just one big major um, ecosystem, like a... Uh, not a microsystem. What is the opposite? Almost of that? like a, almost a, a federation. Uh, yeah, like a, just, like a united federation. Well, I mean, I'm, oh, I know what I'm see, saying. You like right on that bandwagon, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, I saw that coming. But do you get what I'm saying? Where I mean, we don't really pay attention to where something's made. We we just kind of like. Does that make any sense at all? It does. No, it absolutely does. And that's that's what I think the future is. I think that's what the future has to be. Unfortunately, yeah. it's not the present. And and for people that you want to grab as as an OEM. For these people that you want to that that are saying, "What are you doing for our country, which is hurting?" You know, um, which is a hilarious statement for anyone listening from a, a country less fortunate than America. Um, so we're we're not you know we're we're not uh, oblivious to that, but uh, you know it, for for those to try to capture those customers, Hello? it makes sense for an OEM to do this. <laughs> oh yeah, that's how we started the call today with uh, accents that were. What happened to none. me? Hey, what happened? <laughs> Uh, Hello. Where's yeah. HTC's big marketing push? Asked asked I. Well, it'll be interesting to see what happens with Motorola. But I want to talk about HTC real quick because Stephen Schenk yeah. has a good piece here. Did, didn't okay. Peter Chow say that he was going to double down on marketing and double down or something oh. like that? That's their favorite. I'm going to double that's, down that's every time somebody says that. Turn. Yeah. Everybody. Every time someone says that, I think of uh, the the sandwich at KFC. Oh, see, good for you. Every time somebody says that, I think about HP and uh, and WebOS. They, the Ever. Verge actually had an excellent editorial about doubling down. They 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 talked about any time a company says they're doubling down on something, it means that it's about to die. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or that's like that's like or putting a show on. Really, or they're they're just really hungry for a double chicken sandwich. <laughs> it could be. I was gonna say it's like, putting, it's like putting a show on CBS at nine o'clock Eastern. That's it's it's on the chopping block. Yes. So. Yeah. Oh God. Never I'm, I'm become invested in a show on CBS at nine o'clock. It's a bad idea. If, if this were a if this were a text piece, I would have put a strike through uh, through everything you said after the word CBS, and then I would have said <laughs> fix that for you. Thank you. Poor, poor CBS. I wish they could make something good. Uh, let me talk about uh, – let me ask you guys about this. Now, um, Stephen makes the point in his editorial that HTC promised a big marketing push for the HTC One, unlike anything that we had seen before from them. But it is the same. It is the it, essentially the same exact marketing effort, just with different material. Now, 
I was stronger s- for the same length of time. That's the problem. Is they they is put this huge yeah. marketing push behind the launch, and then like, oh, what was that phone? I don't even remember. We so you, you you contend that it has dropped off. Well, I mean, do you see any ads anywhere ever? See, I do. You, I I still do. That this is why maybe I'm this is just where sure I live. This. Yeah, no, maybe, maybe this is a regional thing. But I, in yeah. Boston, I would just get are getting nailed with HTC once I'm on broadcast uh, on a uh, movie. Theater pre roll ads um, everywhere. It's, it's, I mean, really all we have any kind of marketing for here is like tractors and (laughs) now what about it? Camouflage stuff and Bass Pro Shop. What about in Chicago? Not a dang thing. Really? Yeah, it's, it's crickets out here as far as the HTC One is concerned. I mean, in the stores, there's a lot of signage in like the AT&T stores and whatnot. There's signage and, you know, there's, uh, you know, I went to the AT&T when I, when I got my Lumia, actually, there were probably four or five demo units of the HTC One around and, um, there was a couple of S4s, but granted, the S4s were in the middle of the store, and the HTC ones were around the uh, periphery. But still, there were a lot of HTC ones rolling around there. So, but outside um, the but store, you're not seeing any. any outside kind of the push. store, no billboards, no commercials, no radio, nothing. See, that's interesting because you know in Boston, it's it's getting recognition, and it's getting enough recognition to instill some mind share. And actually, that applies to Eastern Long Island as well. Strangely enough, I was on the ferry on the way back, uh, writing some part of a review, and I had all these phone spread out around me so this like random dude rolls up and he's like hey is that one of them new windows phones and i'm like yeah and we start talking about it and uh i start telling him about all the phones that i've you know because i'm just talking my head off all the phones all the phones all the phones and i start talking about the htc one and immediately he picks it right up and this guy is not a he's a self-described luddite but immediately he's like oh is that the one with the front-facing speakers and i'm like yeah uh Y- yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> so it says the grills on the front that look like speakers. <laughs> Taylor, come no, on! But before before I even got my demo unit out is the thing. Like, so it, it is cool. So I, you know, I think it is generating more mind share certainly than the One X did. I don't think anybody knew what the hell the One X was when I pulled that out last year. So I don't know. I I agree that I'd like to see more. Um, but uh, it's interesting to hear from – I wanted to take a little sample set on our podcast from Chicago and the Carolinas. And it seems like Boston is Boston and the New York area are getting a little more representation from our unscientific uh, poll here. I don't, I don't spend enough time in Charlotte. I, I mean I live in the – no, I live in Concord where I, I live in NASCAR country. When yeah. people think of NASCAR, they think of Charlotte and Concord, Charlotte Motor Speedway, which is in Concord. Um, all the racing teams, all of them, all the any racing team that's anyone for NASCAR is in Concord or Mooresville. I mean, it's just everything is right here. And all your marketing, you see Coca-Cola 600 signs everywhere. You see NASCAR this, NASCAR that, billboards for NASCAR. It's, I you bet don't you see, all had like, a lot of like, Nextel back in the day. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> everywhere. Nextel yeah. everywhere. Um, but the only place you would go to see stuff like that is actually into the heart of Charlotte or maybe to the racetrack on a race day. They'll, they'll probably have a ton of ads inside. But outside, all they're doing is trying to get people inside. Yeah. So they don't care so, about anything else here. <laughs> I just, I'm sorry. Except, I just, for, guess, except for camouflage and we, mossy oak. This is t- yeah, only it. tangentially related, but uh, <laughs> motor- we talked about Motorola before, and uh, we used to have, uh, it, it, when Nextel came out with the i730, it was like a huge, de- awesome device, and people loved it, and people came in to buy it in throngs, so we were always running out. But they also had something called the Nextel, the NASCAR Nextel Cup Series, uh, where they had a bunch of like custom painted i730s in different driver colors from NASCAR and, and Jeff so, Gordon. Yeah, and people come and say, y'all got that Jeff Gordon phone? And oh, we'd sell God. them to the people. You know, they were hundred dollars more than a regular i730. So we'd sell them to those people. But the thing is, people would come in not wanting those. They'd come in just wanting the i730. But we'd be out. But we'd be like, well, we have the i736. We got the NASCAR one. And they're like, uh, Okay, which one is the like least NASCAR? Intimidator <laughs> 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 in here. <laughs> oh, whoa. whoa, whoa, whoa! What is that? That was my phone. Sorry, it was like thirty rings at once. Yeah, what is that? Like a landline Let's... phone? Is that like a Cisco <laughs> business phone? What's up? Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. That was just that was my house phone. And yes, we have the stupidest phones in the world that ring each individually about half a second apart from each other. So wow. you'll actually hear like. So it sounds like, like a bunch of tri- uh, crickets chirping. 
It, no, it sounds like a bunch of crickets beating you in the head with a hammer. Yeah. So, yeah. Cool. Right, that's exciting when that happens. At least you get happens. the message. Uh, NASCAR. NASCAR. I do know I'm going to unplug my phone. So. <laughs> and yes, that is a landline, by the way. I, I knew my, it was a landline. My, it couldn't be a cell phone. My oh. attempts to uh, my attempts to uh, talk my wife into getting rid of the landline have so, thus far failed. Hey, so. It's like the conversation I have with my parents. Mm. So here's my thing. Uh, we talked about HTC. We're almost done with Android. But Taylor wrote a piece, uh, which I like Darren to Tootin. call, <laughs> which I like <laughs> to call um, the piece I wanted to write a long time ago. And for some reason, I never got around to writing this, but I, it was going to be called The Case for Android Skins. And I'm glad well, that... Uh, can, can I stop you uh, why, before we get into this? Why, why even ask? Go ahead. Why not? Yeah, what? Um, I got flamed for calling them skins because they're not technically skins. And I know this. I know that. I knew it. I thought about it when I write or when I wrote skins. They're not skins. They used to be, but they're not anymore. They are completely different builds of Android. But proceed they're skins anyway. yeah <laughs> yeah um you know what's funny like i was looking in the comment thread to find who was complaining about that but you know your comment thread is actually fairly positive on this one which i'm, I'm yeah. glad to see that's a first in weeks i know well it's because you're not <laughs> bashing microsoft on a week where we inexplicably had like four microsoft bashing pieces lined up god the, the comments on that one piece dumb. the last windows phone piece i wrote was just oh my god there were like 150 just yeah. You're an idiot. Comments. I'm like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you didn't even read. You didn't have to read. <laughs> <laughs> so, but this piece. What's nice about this piece is that I completely agree. You know, we have the tech uh, press got itself into a habit for a long time of criticizing uh, then the th things that were then called skins, and now which you can call whatever you want: custom layers, custom builds, OEM builds of Android. And uh, I think it's very important that we kind of periodically take a step back and realize how important these layers are and how much they bring to the experience. And I love some of the examples you cited, Taylor, about the camera no longer functioning properly when you put CyanogenMod on one of these devices. Or uh, what was the other thing? The sound quality on the, the HTC yeah, One. There's, there's audio clipping and boom sound. It's awful. Yeah. Like Every two or three seconds, it just it's not even like a little clip. It's like, pop! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's I'm like, okay... <laughs> Got yep. it. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, you know, it's a good time to talk about this, too, because when the Samsung Galaxy S4 Google Edition was announced, I, like, the, the, the instant reaction of the geek part of me was like, yes, awesome. And then about eight seconds later, I was like, but wait, it's not even on. the same phone. Yeah. And, and also a lot of the stuff that Samsung was bringing. Yes, a lot of it was Cruft and, and Chrome, but a lot of it made, they made the phone a lot more usable, particularly the camera. So, yeah, the camera the software not, especially. Yeah. yeah, the camera software. And when I say that, I don't mean like what you're seeing on the front side. I'm not talking about panorama and all those things. You can add those aftermarket using apps. Yeah. I'm talking about Samsung's auto, uh, uh, <laughs> wow, auto exposure, autofocus. Mm -hmm. All of these things are Samsung's code. And that that's the difference you see when you take a picture with a Galaxy S3, a Galaxy S4, a an HTC One. It's not just the sensor difference. It's how Samsung and HTC optimize the sensor, and Google doesn't do that. That's why the Nexus Four, the Galaxy Nexus, the Nexus S, and the Nexus One all had pretty much terrible cameras. Mm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's not necessarily the sensor. It's that Google doesn't really optimize the camera. They're like, here it is, and have fun. <laughs> and actually, uh, speaking to your point about you can get third-party apps to replace all the Samsung features, I have yet to find a third-party app that does best face on my uh, GS3. So, yeah. Mm. yeah, that is true. Now, I wish I wish Scalato would release an app, but I guess they don't because they license their software. I don't know. <sighs> you know, I I, I just think uh, it was a good point. It was worth mentioning. If you haven't looked at the uh, at the article, you should check it out in the rundown. It's already got a bunch of uh, traffic to it. I think it's it's a pretty popular piece. And uh, I may even share it twice if Taylor if Taylor stops interrupting me on the air. Yay! Oh, no, no, not doing it. Not doing it. <laughs> I must be in your hype, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm joking with you. Can we I'd... talk about iOS very briefly? Well, very I briefly. was just going to say the the <laughs> yeah. Kill that segue. <laughs> kill it. Uh, kill it with fire. Um, <laughs> Taylor Narton, not Martin. Taylor Narton commented um taylor martin has no clue what he's talking about and this article confirms it no offense 
<laughs> wow. So I responded. I responded. Professional grade trolling. Yes, I responded. Or maybe I do, and you don't understand what I'm saying. No offense. Oh, it nice. actually yes. works in this case because I didn't say anything offensive. Nice. <laughs> Boom. Bam. My flame is back. <laughs> <laughs> Um, All right. Well, proceed. Y- you know what? You know what? That was a that was a response that was um, neither flat nor colorless, but that may not be the case for the new version of iOS. Yes. Wow. From everything we've heard, Apple's iOS seven uh, says Stephen Shank in this latest piece is set to be the Jonathan Ive show. Uh, with the te- designer tearing into the skeuomorphic heavy look we've been familiar with. So we're seeing reports, basically, that, that, that the new iOS may be not just flat and, and light on textures, but it may also be heading toward a more monochromatic black-and-white approach. Now, I don't think that Apple's going to make the mistake of, of going um, like the metro route when you dig into the settings menu and just see like black, you know, white text on a black background. But not. yeah, me me too. Because that's one of my least favorite things about Windows Phone. It's like indeed you have to read every entry instead of your eye registering Ugh. a color or a shape. It's boring, and it, and it is dull. Yeah, on the on now the now flat is awesome. I love flat. That is very apparent in me the too. home screen setup I have. But black and white kills it. But look at what, it. like look at what Google has done recently in Android, where they've they've really tended toward the white side, which I've found an interesting choice because we saw this push toward black in Hollow. Or it's, it, well, in Hollow, but first in Honeycomb, I think. And even though Honeycomb was a total train wreck, it was still very Tron-like and very futuristic. But it did that with darker tones. And now Google's doing the opposite, and it's making everything, just kind of whitewashing everything. But it's doing it with, with splashes of color. What do I mean? Yeah. Like well, oh, okay. Google okay. Now? You're not talking about you're not talking about Android. You're talking about just Google, just Google. Yeah. Like but, like all of their services. Oh, right. So, Gmail, so, Google Now. So Jellybean itself is still yeah. pretty dark, but I'm talking about their services. Yeah. Okay. And I'm talking, yeah. and I think they're gonna they're gonna push that into Android too. I think Android is gonna get a lot brighter in the next version. I don't know. Only because black is more power efficient. Well, on an AMOLED screen, yes. Not on an LCD. Oh. Even on LCD, it's a little more power efficient, if I'm not mistaken. Well, LCD, you're running that backlight the whole time. It kind of doesn't matter. I, I, I yeah. don't think. I think we're talking maybe a percentage point or two. But then again, I, I, I can't source any of that. You may well be right. But I don't know. Regardless, I mean, aesthetically speaking, you know, I, I, there are ways to do um, there are ways to do minimal color that look really good, and I think Google is doing that nicely with its services right now. Uh, by whitewashing it. So and I, Apple, you know, is no stranger to good software design. We've been complaining about iOS for years, but... Skeuomorphism. Yeah. <laughs> I, no, I know, but but it's... You know, Apple knows how to make beautiful stuff, and especially when they've been kind of abused about it for at least two years, and maybe even three, was when we started hearing, like, boy, I'm tired of iOS, you know? So I, I'm I'm hopeful that they are going to bring something really interesting to the fold here. I have I have a fear... I have a fear that they're going to make iOS gorgeous, that it's going to look great, and then they're really not going to add anything to it, that they're going to focus on the look and add their three, four, five hundred new features that really don't mean anything. Hmm. Like so you, so iOS, you're afraid they're going to pull a Samsung? <clears throat> well, I think they're going to pull an Apple, because look at iOS 5 and iOS 6. They really didn't add much of anything, iMessage. Which is good. I use iMessage, but I can't send pictures using it now. iMessage is um, weakest. Yeah, I, I hate it because it's closed down and, and I can only message my friends. And they're like, why don't you have an it, iPhone? It breaks all the time. And then it I'm makes like, my life harder. Where I'm like, I, I've, I've advocated the iPhone to people in my life who need simple phones. And then they're like, all right, now what? Now it's green. Now it's blue. Now why is it blue when I text her and, and green when yeah. I text you? It's like, I... Di- I uh, for the same reason, it only works when you text me because it's using a standard. Anyway, I, let's. I um, message sucks. So that <laughs> notification center, that was a much needed change, but they did it very, very poorly. Ugh. Yeah. Um, so the it, multitasking, they haven't added anything super compelling. It's just been kind of catching up all this exactly, time. Exactly. Exactly. They've been they've been catching up. They did the Apple thing, right? Where they 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 released a feature light version first and then they now they've been catching up with the features but i agree now we're seeing some of that in steven's kind of uh, story here this is from nine to five mac by the way but we're seeing not everything will be getting a huge makeover mail is largely unchanged we hear while others may be barely recognizable so mail needs to be changed more than any of them <laughs> it's so bad <laughs> i don't know i don't um, think mail is bad you've got that side pain bad. thing it's like, well it's uh, 
Anyway, um, yeah, we, we, I, Tim Cook. We've confirmed though it's coming out of WWDC, so we are going to see this soon. Um, Tim Cook said that he's not opposed to opening up APIs, which is amazing because that's something that, that Steve Jobs would have never have done is opened up APIs. They said yeah. they're probably not going to do it, but they're not opposed to it, which means it could happen in the future. And what I mean by opening up APIs is sharing. That is the biggest, biggest problem with iOS right now, at least for me is I, on my Android phones, I can, from any app that provides a sharing option, so the browser or an RSS reader, Twitter, Google+, it doesn't matter what it is, I can hit Action Overflow and share. And I can share anything that I'm in, any link or anything, to anything that receives sharing. So Twitter, Google+, the browser, yeah. Facebook, anything. I can yeah. do it from anywhere. Which is awesome. On iOS, yeah. you have to go into an app, copy a link, or or send. You can share to mail messages, Facebook or Twitter. And those are only the, the stock Facebook and Twitter apps. That's not if you use TweetBot or anything to that degree. Right. So you can share to those. And then That's if you it. want to use anything else, you have to copy a link. Go into another app and paste it and share. And that might you might be saying, you know, that's not that big of a deal. But when you share a lot... It's a big of a deal. It's a big deal. <laughs> it's a big deal. <laughs> like Pocket. I use Pocket religiously to, sh- to save links for reading later. And I have to go into the browser, copy the link, and then go into Pocket to save. On Android, I'm in the browser, hit share, add to Pocket, done. Now, did you mainly use Pocket in the past or do you use Pocket now? Oh, uh, you're welcome. You're I welcome. saw that. Oh. I know you saw that. <laughs> what <laughs> I love is when we, what I love is when we do a story about Pocket or we mention Pocket in an editorial, and like there's always that one dork commenter who's like, "Whoa, shameless self self promotion! Way to way to plug yourselves, dudes!" And it's like we we don't we don't own Pocket. <laughs> well, well, someone yeah, <laughs> we have yeah, nothing to um, do with Pocket. <laughs> in one of the articles I wrote last week, flaming. Um, Windows Phone was I, I included the app Pocket Casts. Oh yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, and everybody's like, hey, "You own Pocket Casts?" <laughs> and I'm like, what? No, we don't. <laughs> oh, internet. Hey, uh, speaking of Windows Phone, let's jump to it before we get out of here um, because we do have to go. Uh, it, we are very busy. Um, there are two stories in the Windows Phone rundown. One of them is going to be removed because it's from last week. Sorry about that, gentlemen. Uh, the news that um, we're, we're tired of Nokia EOS rumors, by the way. <laughs> oh my uh, God, are we tired? Oh man, <laughs> EOS I rumors. just want to see the thing. Uh, the Nokia Amber WP8 update, which I actually just learned about. I know this is kind of old news, but I had been conflating it with the general Windows Phone 8 GDR2 update. But there's, it, it's going to go. I guess it's it's Nokia sourced, and it's going to go hand in hand with the GDR2 update. Um, and this is going to deliver, apparently, some extra Nokia-specific enhancements. So we have some photos from who? Who is this from? My Nokia blog. But it's also then they source it from WP Central forums, and it's from dospy.com, do spy. Anyway, uh, we're seeing some modifications to a Nokia Lumia 925 with a camera ISO settings of 3200. There's an on-screen clock that stays on, I guess, even when the device is off or um, in standby. Hmm. And there's some tweaks to the display saturation is what we're saying. I'm sure we'll see more, but, boy, I'm looking forward to seeing. What, what is the... What a major update, guys. What, well, hold on a second. It might, <laughs> it, it might well be because, first, I'm looking forward to two major things in the Nokia Amber update. And I am not... I'm going to tell you them, but first I want to ask Adam Dowd, uh, who is more, better versed in Windows Phone than Taylor Martin, <laughs> um, about what features he's most looking forward to in Nokia Amber. Uh, to be honest, I, just, I want the radio back. Um, the FM radio? So when, uh, the FM radio. When I go to, uh, when I go to my gym, um, they have you know the TVs going across the top of the thing, oh, and they've yeah. got the frequencies down below. Like, I don't have a radio. Who has a radio anymore? That's not in their car. Three to listen to this channel. Yeah. 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 So the one time I went to my gym, and this was when I still had the Lumia 900, and I'm just like, wait a minute, my Lumia 900 has. Ra- oh wait. So I plugged it in, and I turned on the radio, and I watched the Blackhawks game while on the elliptical. It was beautiful. Yes. So and yep. so and then when Windows 8 
when I got the Lumia 920, I'm like, I don't have that anymore. Sad Panda, although I'm much more of an AM person myself. But now, it, um, is, was it Windows Phone 8 that broke the FM radio, or was it Nokia's new hardware? What what was it that? Because the hardware has it, right? It's Windows Phone 8 that 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 doesn't Excuse have me. it for okay. whatever reason. Okay, so all right, but but the the, the Lumia 920 hardware is capable Why? of supporting it. It is my understanding, yes. Yeah. Why would why would Microsoft take features out? I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Because they had to rebuild Windows Phone from the bottom up with a new kernel. Right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and they, I'm sure they had to throw stuff out in order. What did they say? They used that wonderful metaphor. They're like, this is like trying to change the tire on a race car while it's moving down the road. And <laughs> I, I, so I get why they would they would be like FM radio. Yeah, who uses that? Yeah, about 450 people. Let's save right. that for the next update. So I get it. Right. Well, that's and like also, over you know, half there's... their users, right? Oh, you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Stan. Wow. Uh, well, wow. also there's there's also third party apps that'll let you do, get <laughs> FM FM feed, there but they th- they're. Re- Right, but they're streamed over data connections. Exactly, they're tune yeah. in, like tune in radio. You can tune into you know the FM channels, but you can't do custom FM channels because the hard yeah. because the hardware support isn't there. Yeah. Or the software support isn't there for the hardware. So right. that's where I would particularly so, enjoy having it. So that's so that's interesting. So the FM radio is here, uh, and my my thing is uh, because I've used the BlackBerry Z10 so often this past month because we did the after the buzz on it mm-hmm. is the double tap to unlock, which. Um, you know, every time we mention it, somebody's got to come up and remind us that the Nokia N9 was the first to do it, or <laughs> oh, one of the most visible it. to do it. And yeah, no, and, and so it's it's cool. Um, I don't care who did it first; it's awesome. Like after using the BlackBerry Z10 for like two days, you mm-hmm. will do it on every other phone. It's like the WebOS thing where you use the pre for a couple of days, then on every other phone you're doing the upswipe to get back to card yep. view. <laughs> uh, well, first of all, BlackBerry <laughs> that happens with the BlackBerry too. But yeah. uh, but it's it's the swipe to unlock on the screen and the double tap to unlock on the screen is just going to be the oh it's going to be amazing. But the biggest headache solver that I'm waiting for in Nokia Amber, and this is not confirmed. We don't know if they're going to do this, but if they redo the camera viewfinder, um, this is not Nokia's fault. It's Microsoft's fault. But oh my god. I, once again this week, for two frickin' days, shot images on my Lumia 920 or 928, I can't remember, with in, in, in backlight mode or in night mode. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The damn yeah. thing yeah. doesn't tell you. There's no icon in the viewfinder to tell you that it's in a different mode, and it <coughs> remembers the last mode it was in, and that, that's persistent across, I think that's even persistent after a reboot. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's and so actually, annoying. you take so they a went picture. from not remembering any camera settings to remembering everything, to remembering everything, yeah. and not telling you. It's like yeah. <laughs> you, the, the, it, there should be something. If you're not going to do an icon, then at least make the camera viewfinder smarter to where it's like, hey, I notice you're shooting at 1 p.m. in broad daylight. Maybe take <laughs> night portrait mode off. Yeah, yeah. there's a yeah. Well, you only see it until you take a picture, and then it like hesitates for a second, and then it brightens the picture, and you're like, wait, yeah, why did you do like, that? Wait, oh, wait, son, why are you doing that? Right. <laughs> Exactly. But if you are, if, see, if you're taking shots quickly, like, I, I think people assume that, like, the, the, the counter argument to this, right, is to be like, well, why don't you notice the picture sucks? You, you should know that. The, but, you know, we don't take pictures in, in laboratory conditions all the time, as I, as I just reminded somebody on YouTube. Um, a little too snippily, I should add. The comment was mean, came out meaner than I meant it to. But, you know, we, we're doing stuff. We're living life. You know, that's the way you should review a phone is by integrating it into your normal life, I feel. So I'm out on, like, the boat. You know, I'm, like, crossing from one side to another, and there's stuff going on, and I'm grabbing a beer or whatever. And it's like, oh, I want to take a picture real quick. I don't always notice until I get home later. I'm like, why is there so much noise in this shot? Oh, son of a... You know, and then I look it up, and it's like it's because you were on a boat. Because yeah. I'm, I'm on a boat, like a boss. You're on a boat. That's right. Well, uh, with, the, with, with that being said, uh, we, we're, we've gone a little over our, our limit here. I want to mention, as I frequently do, that uh, your listener mail is not going on red, folks. We do have it piled up in the podcast inbox, uh, and when we have a longer time slot, we will get to it. But right now, like I say, I'm doing two reviews. You gentlemen are very busy with your own stuff. We've got a jet. But final thoughts before we sign off from Chicago? Uh, um, 
I wish the touchpad Go had come out. It would not have made a difference in the ultimate fate of WebOS, but at the same time, I'm kind of happy it didn't because as I concluded my editorial, um, if it had come out, then this would have been a very boring article about a failed tablet instead of an interesting one about a gold-plated unicorn. Oh, I loved that lead-out, by the way. That is a great piece. Um, Folks, it has eight comments on it. If you want to get your opinion out there, that's the piece to go to. (laughs) Wait, I'm up to eight? Yeah. Yes! <laughs> God, it's so depressing to write WebOS pieces because the yeah because yeah, its time has passed. But God, it's so nice to see things just popping out of the woodwork still from um, from that vaunted but failed um, effort. So thank you very much, Adam, for coming on the show today. It's nice to have you My back. Pleasure. Uh, Taylor, uh, as always, it was a, a difficult and trying experience, and um, you know I, you I, I, thank, me. I thank you for your heightened for my heightened blood pressure. Thank you. You love me, and <laughs> I no, I need to make it clear: I do not hate Windows Phone. That was the whole point of some of the articles I wrote last week. I don't hate Windows Phone, but it lacks some of the things I need, and it's an easy target. Oh, oof. Just, you know, you're going to have to change out your <laughs> dig shovel. Those, <laughs> dig those nails in deeper. And, uh, uh, it was an easy barrel. target. We have, uh, we have a lot more coming on um, on Windows Phone, as always. Um, so uh, everyone who's not... torture for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm very much looking forward to getting my hands on the Lumia 925, I will say. And Taylor, now that you have an Ative S, uh, I look forward to suggesting all the different ways we can get you using Windows Phone all the time. <laughs> Don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> Uh, all that being said, that's going to do it for this episode of The Weekly. Find us on Twitter. Taylor Martin is at CasperTech, all lowercase for some reason, C-A-S-P-E-R-T-E-K. Adam Dowd over there is at Dead Technology, spelled the way it sounds, and I am at Captain Two Phones, as always. Hey, shoot us an email, podcast at pocketnow.com. Find us at Facebook and Google Plus as Pocket Now. Uh, follow Pocket Now officially at Pocket Now on Twitter. And leave us a review. We still need them. They are so important. iTunes or Xbox Music, uh, the Pocket Now Weekly podcast. Everyone, thank you for listening, and we'll see you next week. NASCAR Big Trucks! Yeah! (laughs) Hey! Hey! Hey, find us on Twitter. Uh, Taylor is at CasperTech, C-A-S-P-E-R-T-E-K. All lowercase now. Adam Dowd is... (laughs) What? Uh, Yeah, switched to all lowercase. You know what's funny? So when you... When you when you when you break into the outro, we actually go longer than the music can cover. So then it sounds stupid. <laughs> Have fun with that. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. I got to do it over now. Thanks. <laughs>